In this lecture, we will review migraines and headaches in children. Migraines are a common complaint in children. They are more frequent as children get older, and there's many causes of headaches. So a good history goes a long way in figuring out what kind of headache or migraine is going on. There are many vascular causes of headaches, including migraines, the common headache, vasculitis, or aneurysm. And as you can see, aneurysm, while rare, is extremely severe. So distinguishing between these types of headaches is important. Generally, 50% of migraines will start in people under 20 years of age. Triggers of migraines can include certain types of food, certain chemicals, alcohol, especially maybe red wine or certain types of alcohol, certain medications can trigger, triggers, trigger migraines in people, and lights or noise can trigger migraines. Additionally, psychosocial stress can trigger migraines. So people with migraines will tell you there are certain things that tend to set them off, and so avoidance of those things becomes a major part of their lives. Migraines rarely present in infants. They can present with episodes of pallor, episodes of decreased activity, and episodes of vomiting. Often those infants are not capable of saying that their head hurts. This can be a very difficult diagnosis. In young children, they may develop vomiting in addition to their headache. They may have light or noise sensitivity. And often migraines are bitemporal. So if they're saying there's a focal headache in one spot, that's probably not a migraine. In adolescence, migraines tend to be gradual in onset. They tend to be a throbbing headache, and they're often unitemporal. So in adolescence, they become more unilateral. Migraines typically worsen with activity. It's important in a migraine patient just to lie still. Often they have photophobia or photophonia. So a quiet, dark place is an important way to help get them feeling better. Typically, migraines can last either one, but rarely up to even three days. So a one-hour headache, usually tolerable, but getting them under control is important. Some patients with migraines will say that they sense an aura or see flashing lights or other things. This is less common in young children. Only about a third do that. Generally, auras include visual spots, seeing colored lights, or even complex images. Occasionally, patients can have complicated migraines, and these can result in temporary neurologic deficits, such as weakness or limpness. Those are rare, but they are definitely known to happen. Migraines are controlled best by having a good regimen of sleep, exercise, and hydration. Of course, if a patient has a particular trigger that causes them to have migraines, patients should avoid those triggers. And over time, they, be, they develop an understanding of what are the typical triggers of their migraines. Therapy is important for migraines because these headaches can be debilitating. Generally, we'll provide ibuprofen very early in the headache. Earlier use of ibuprofen is important as it can stem and reduce the severity of the eventual worseness of the headache. Patients can use sumatriptan nasal spray after 12 years of age in children. So that's a good and effective method and medication for control of migraines. Other meds include promethazine, prochlorperazine, and there's others out there. So there are also other types of headaches we should discuss. One common type of headache is the tension type headache. Tension headaches are usually diffuse in location and non-throbbing. They're usually not worse with activity, and there's no nausea or vomiting associated with it. They can last up to 30 minutes, but they can even last up to seven days. So these can be a very prolonged headache. The mechanism of tension headaches isn't quite clear, and we usually treat them with ibuprofen, or if they're refractory and not getting better, sometimes people use topiramate. Cluster headaches are rare in children under 10. They're usually unilateral and frontal or periorbital. They have 
often a trigeminal distribution in the trigeminal nerve. And they are usually short, but there's multiple headaches over and over and over again in a short period of time, hence the name cluster headaches. The first line therapy for cluster headaches, interestingly, is oxygen therapy. We'll put these children on 100% oxygen, and they often get better. We often will send families home with oxygen tanks to use that to treat their headaches. Also, triptans may be useful in the treatment of their headaches. Other medicines include ergotamine and octreotide. 